this is it. This is the future of electricity. This is the future of energy. This is where we face the future and, and, and figure out where we're going. So this is uh, David Biello from Scientific American. I'm here at uh, the ARPA-E conference. This is one of the 37 out of the 3,700 uh, participants to be actually awarded money. And it's a liquid metal battery for grid scale storage. Uh, please introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your technology. Great, so my name is Dave Bradwell. I'm a PhD student at MIT, and I'm one of the co-inventors of the liquid metal battery. And this is a project that I've been working on for four years now, and we recently got a $7 million grant from ARPA-E, which is going to help us accelerate the research and development path of, of this new technology. So what is the technology? How does it work? So the new technology, I actually have an example here. This is one of the cells that we've operated, and the basic idea is that we have three liquid components, and that's a unique feature of this battery. The, the components are added into a crucible, uh, which is over here, and uh, three components are added on top of one another, melted at high temperature, and they, so, and they can then pass current um, and, and high power and store a lot of energy. Why is it able to, say, store more energy than, than conventional batteries, and kind of where did this idea come from? So it, it can store a lot of energy, uh, but the biggest benefit of this technology is are twofold. It's the low-cost materials that are involved with it, and it's the scalability. So the, this, this cell right now is only one inch diameter, but we can envision a cell that's 12 inches, you know, a couple feet in diameter or larger, uh, and very easy to assemble using these low-cost, abundant materials. The technology was initially motivated by the aluminum smelting industry, which is renowned for consuming huge amounts of power and, uh, and produce ultimately a very low-cost product. And the idea was to take that, uh, that technology, that process, and make it reversible. Uh, change the components around so that you can not only consume a large amount of energy, but return it electrically back to the grid. And did that turn out to be possible, or did you have to go with other materials? We, we absolutely went with other materials. So <laughs> we, that was a starting point uh, in, in, our, in our heads, and we moved from, uh, since there to other chemistries, uh, other slightly different mechanisms as well. Uh, but the, the basic idea are these three liquid layers that float on top of one another using low-cost components. The primary motivation for this technology was for smoothing out the power from wind and solar. So if it's not windy and it's not su sunny, but you need electricity and a large part of your grid comes from those intermittent renewables, you're in a bit of trouble. So the idea is to take this, this battery or a larger version of it and put it at the bottom of a wind turbine or somewhere else on the grid so that it could store the energy when there's excess energy being produced and return it when, when required. So you have, uh, I'm going to call that a Coke can sized uh, uh, battery there. How yes. big are we talking about when you get to when you get to grid scale, and how big is the next step for you? So, to give you an idea of scale, uh, a one megawatt battery that could, say, be placed at the bottom of a wind turbine would be about, about the size of a large bus. So these are still large systems. That we can't get uh, too much energy in a small space, uh, but it's not inconceivable. Wind turbines are massive structures, and so uh, a bus-sized system at the bottom of a wind turbine feels about the right, right scale, so it seems that it's feasible. Uh, currently, we're not there, we're, we're, we're at this very small scale. But the RPE grant that we've received, uh, as well as funding from uh, Total, a French energy company, uh, and a couple of philanthropic donors along the way, uh, they, they're gonna help us to get from this scale to uh, a five kilowatt scale battery, which is about 12 inches diameter with about 10, 10 cells high. And so that's what we're aiming for for the next three years. Next three years, so how long do you think before we see those you know, bus size the batteries it's, out there? It's a long path. It's, it's a long it's, path. It's, it's not, information technology. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of interest in commercializing this technology, uh, but for now we're focusing on getting the chemistry right, getting it to work on a small scale, looking to scale up uh, over the next three years, and then from there, three to five years or more. Thank you so much for your time. Great. Thanks, Dave.